Shocking city manager resignation exposes the Liberal City Council's web of corruption, lies, and incompetence. The two-faced Edmonton Liberal City Council's House of Cards is crashing down after a series of jaw-dropping scandals pushed top bureaucrat Andre Corbold over the edge. Homeless shelters are on the budget chopping block in favor of spending hundreds of millions on vanity projects like bike lanes. Corbold's resignation lifts the lid on the council's shameless lies, budget mismanagement, useless overspending, and cutthroat political games. All while the city council tries to blame everyone under the sun but themselves. But critics and watchdogs are slowly following in the steps of Corbold and are putting the spotlight on Edmonton's underbelly, gathering evidence of the sleazy lies and backroom deals. This isn't just incompetence and mismanagement. It's woeful deception and outright corruption. The council's day of reckoning is coming. Their scapegoating and smears won't stop the truth. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we start today's video, take a quick second to subscribe to our US-based channel, Street Politics USA, where we report daily uncensored US news and how the unfolding political landscape can impact Canada. You can find the link in the description below. The recent resignation of Edmonton's city manager Andre Corbold caps off months of tensions between the bureaucrat and the city's left-leaning council. Corbold's departure comes amid growing outrage among fiscal conservatives and watchdog groups over perceived incompetence, mismanagement, and dishonesty by the progressive liberal council majority. While the official statements paint Corbold's exit as mutual and amicable, behind the curtains a much more expected story with the same roles taking place. Sources within City Hall paint a more honest picture with Corbold being pushed out after repeatedly and righteously clashing with a corrupt and incompetent city council over its very expensive and outright useless progressive agenda. Corbold, a career civil servant, found himself at odds with councillors more focused on woke signaling and pleasing special interests than good governance. So the top city bureaucrat was on a thin string with mounting pressure, trying to balance implementing the Liberal City Council's vain and costly ideas with not going over the budget or having to increase taxes on Edmonton citizens every week. And you wonder how anyone can support the corrupt, woke liberals or their role model, Justin Trudeau. Edmonton Council brought Corbold in last year to act as a compliant enabler and rubber stamp their policies. But he quickly drew their ire by pushing back on expensive pet projects and irresponsible spending. This came to a head over the OP-12 cost-cutting directive issued by council late last year. But what is this OP-12 program that had Corbold so enraged? What could it have possibly entailed? OP-12 is one of the most egregious displays of cronyism and corruption from a liberal council that Canadians will ever lay their eyes on. It is not as bad as the casual and almost weekly at this point, Trudeau scandal, but is brazenly shameful in its own way. OP-12 called for $60 million in budget savings from city operations, with the goal of redirecting funds worth $240 million toward the Liberal Council's woke and useless wish list items and initiatives. Corbold, understandably enough, resisted fully implementing these shameful cuts, triggering all the woke Liberal Council members who felt their undeserved authority was being undermined by a man with common sense. OP-12 was a sad political theater to pretend the Liberal City Council was fiscally responsible, while plowing ahead with costly, ideologically driven measures. Corbold failed to play along with the corrupt council's charade, hence the ideological rift. Among the many necessary things that Edmonton citizens in dire need were relying on and were on the chopping block during the shameful secret city council meeting was day shelters. In a classic and disgusting display of bureaucratic politics, Edmonton's Liberal City Council recently voted behind closed doors to cut funding for day shelter services at the Bissell Center and Boyle Street. All for a transparently cynical move intended to stir public outrage and pressure the provincial Alberta government into restoring the funding. By cutting these high-profile services for the homeless, the city aims to pin the blame on supposed provincial stinginess and rob them of even more undeserved money that will probably not even go into the shelter's operations. The city claims it simply cannot afford the $4.1 million needed to keep the shelters open. But this sad attempt at a fiscal plea rings hollow for conservatives, given council's appetite for lavish spending on bike lanes, public art, and unaccountable social agencies. Liberal Mayor Omar Jeet Sohi and his corrupt allies quickly tried to pass the buck to the provincial Alberta government, claiming shelter funding is their constitutional responsibility. It also came to light that behind closed doors, councillors decided not to renew funding for the Bissell Centre and Boyle Street. The initial help was always meant to be one-time pandemic funding until the government stepped up. At this time, it is very difficult to continue to uh, take on the responsibilities that province should be uh, meeting uh, under their constitutional obligations. 
there isn't much more room. The city is nearly at its debt limit, and there are still more union negotiations to be dealt with. We are under a lot of pressure uh, to uh, catch up with the underinvestments uh, of the previous uh, uh, government uh, uh, council. However, the province is already providing Edmonton with more than enough funding as it aims to give out $84 million over two years for homelessness initiatives. So where did the money go exactly? Where was it spent? Will the funding perhaps be incorporated into the astounding $100 million plan to rebuild and reform bike lanes? Or is it part of the gargantuan $240 million that is aimed at more vanity and useless woke projects? It tells you everything you need to know when the people in power are trampling all over Canadians in need just to virtue signal and favor a minority fringe group. When $4 million cannot be spared to provide shelter for Canadians and $100 million is being spent willy-nilly for bike lanes, you know you have reached a lack of self-awareness that is lethal to everyone around you and under you. Council's main motive appears to be embarrassing the Danielle Smith administration into opening the taps to Edmonton's bloated bureaucracy all while avoiding tough decisions around reforming unsustainable spending of its own. The judge who allowed homeless encampment removals to proceed specifically said adequate shelter space must exist. Given this, ensuring daytime shelter availability is at least partly the city's responsibility. If the city council seems willing to play politics with vulnerable people's lives this winter, just to blame provincial leaders and vindicate their own tax and spend policies. Typical snake liberal behavior. All they want is to take and consume, and when the time for accountability comes, when the time for hard work comes and passes with nothing changing, they start blaming conservatives in power to assign them undeserved failure and incompetence in the eyes of hardworking Canadians. It is a classic old tale of liberal mischief, only this time Canadians are more aware than ever and are not going to stay patient on all of this corruption. But the corruption seemingly has no end for the shameless Edmonton City Council as a whisper campaign to undermine Corbel took shape exploiting controversies like homeless encampment removals and labor disputes to paint him as the scapegoat. The city manager soon found himself facing the wrath of councillors and their allies among activist groups and public sector unions. In reality, the homelessness crisis and city workforce unrest stems directly from the council's misguided policies. But it was politically expedient for the liberal council to make the city manager their fall guy. And now that Corbold has had enough after months of witnessing firsthand a city council running Edmonton as if it was their pastime playground session, alongside the blame game that aimed at tarnishing his reputation, watchdog groups and concerned Canadians have started eyeing the people in power to really uncover how many skeletons are hidden in their closet. Watchdog groups have accused the Liberal Council of lying to the public about tax hikes, hiding reports, violating procedure and misappropriating funds. For instance, the council deceived homeowners about how much property taxes were rising while voting themselves for more generous pensions. Seems that the liberals are adamant to be called the pension coalition with all of this self-funding for doing absolutely none of the hard work they learned from the best prime minister around Justin Trudeau. Continuing the dumpster diving session with the Edmonton City Council, ethics complaints allege conflict of interest violations involving ties to unions and developers who benefit from council decisions. There are claims of illegal collusion and vote manipulation. Ongoing RCMP and forensic investigations into missing city cash and questionable contracts continue to find troubling irregularities. In short, this city council is certifiably among the most corrupt, unethical, and dishonest in Edmonton's history, maybe even in Canada's history altogether, if it weren't for eight years of Trudeau incompetence and corruption. Andre Corbold seemingly committed the sin of not blindly enabling the Liberal Council's dubious activities. The common sense man took a stand against Trudeau's liberals and challenged their nonsense and ineptitude, only for him to be met with vicious character attacks and a campaign calling for his head because of things out of his control. So how do we get rid of these people? Some have entertained the idea of a provincial takeover to quickly and efficiently get rid of the liberal rot in power. While such a takeover may provide temporary relief, it would ultimately damage Edmonton's autonomy and democratic legitimacy. The precedent could also be used against future conservative councils. The only principled path is to defeat this council at the ballot box. Conservatives must begin the hard work of recruitment and organizing to secure victory in the next election. And there is no anxiousness when it comes to trusting hardworking and honest Canadians to ban their unheard voices together and get the evil out of office. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Edmonton will successfully vote out the liberal headache? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.